Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. She's actually out sick today. She's not feeling very well, so you're stuck with me. And we're going to talk about Hollywood and the, the uh, movies that we're stuck with this year. Not a lot of really good movies coming out, to the best of my knowledge, except for Ghostbusters. I'm, I'm excited about Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I am kind of excited. What's interesting is this article that I'm going to talk about talking about how weak 2024 looks is coming from the gamer. <laughs> this is the same website that was calling for a boycott of Hogwarts legacy, but they're effectively saying that, yeah, Hollywood's got nothing. It's not looking good. Now I'm sure they're going to tie that back to the strikes. And I'm sure that is true in part, but I think Hollywood's just running out of ideas. I think they are. And, uh, you know, regarding the strikes. Yeah. Uh, some writers and some actors and producers, they got what they wanted. Uh, they'll get a better deal if they get a deal because it sounds like there aren't going to be a whole lot of deals going forward because everybody's running out of money. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Paramount here that they are looking at hundreds of layoffs. They're trying desperately to find a buyer. You know, this is this is Paramount, right? Paramount with Star Trek. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, lots of people getting laid off at Paramount. Uh, Netflix, their film chairman, exited stage right and he's been with the company for like five or six years now and he's he's going out on his own he's gonna go uh start his own company or something like this is not a good environment to be starting your own uh your own film studio in I, i'm just saying it sounds like he sees the writing on the wall too because a lot of the content that netflix is gonna pick up is is uh you know produced outside of netflix it's uh, foreign content uh, they had a contingency plan for hollywood running out of stuff and we know what, you know, the situation that Disney's in right now, too. So let's talk about this. They're basically like, yeah, is Madam Web the best we can get this year? <laughs> wow. I thought everybody would be like, oh, Madam Web, women power. It looks absolutely dreadful. Like, it looks very, very bad. Let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, no woohoos today. Geeky is sick. Unfortunately, uh, we're trying to get her her better, but she's been fighting it off and it kind of caught up to her last night. And uh, here we are. So this is, uh, again, coming from the gamer. Shocked. 2024's weak blockbuster slate could be just what Hollywood needs. Or Madam Web, Beetlejuice 2, and a live action Lion King prequel. Really the best Hollywood can do. Yeah, apparently. Um, <laughs> they said there could be some, some surprises. They're talking about Dune 2. They're talking about uh, Deadpool 3. That's interesting. They said a few years ago, I would have expected Deadpool 3 to do as well as its predecessors, but 2023 called the viability of the superhero movie into question. More cape flicks flopped. The Flash, Aquaman 2, Ant-Man 3, Blue Beetle, and the Marvels, then hit. And the only, yeah, the only big hit live action was Guardians of the Galaxy. Given that Ryan Reynolds' Merc with the Mouth movie is the only MCU film slated for this year, there's a bit of a vacuum. Um, yeah, and it's also the first Deadpool movie under Disney. And I don't have a lot of hope for it. I really don't. I think it's going to be a disaster. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be nerfed. There are some other superhero movies on the schedule. Um, they have Venom 3. I forgot about that. Um, they said, given the lack of similar name recognition for its other villain-verse characters... I'm expecting Madam Web to perform like Morbius. Craven the Hunter's presence in Insomniac's recent game raised the character's profile, but time will tell if it's enough to make the forthcoming film a hit. It will not be. Nobody cares about Craven the Hunter without Spider-Man. Nobody cares about Morbius without Spider-Man. Nobody cares at all about Madam Web. Nobody gives a shit about Madam Web, and it looks terrible. And she's supposed to be like an old woman. What the hell's going on here? Uh, DC has one movie, Joker 2. The last Joker movie was a massive hit, and this one has Lady Gaga, but it's going to be a musical, I think. How is that going to go? I don't know how that's going to go. In 2023, multiple superhero movies that were sequels to billion-dollar grocers flamed out the box office, with Aquaman The Lost Kingdom pulling in less than a third of the original's gross and the Marvels failing to recoup its budget. Yeah, but the Marvels wasn't very good, and it was actually the least popular Avengers character, Captain Marvel. A lot of people don't like her, and it was a 
Disney Plus show. It was basically a big screen Disney Plus show. It wasn't a very good movie. Aquaman 2, nobody cares. The DCEU is dead. I would say in this regard, Joker probably has a fairly decent shot if it's good because we're bringing Harley Quinn into it. And it's also a, a, an Elseworlds tale, I guess. It's, it's not set in the main DCEU, kind of like the Batman. I think people will give this one a chance. Again, it being a musical makes me wonder, but uh, who knows? Yeah, given that Joker 2 is a musical and that sounds more than a little gonzo, it could just as easily follow that trajectory. Pulling off, or putting off, I'm sorry, putting off swaths of the wide audience that made the original hit. Yeah, are people, are all the dude bros, are they going to go see the musical, the Joker musical? I've noticed they've been hiding. We've we've talked about this. Uh, a lot of studios are hiding the fact that they've, uh, they're putting out musicals. Uh, I didn't know Wonka was a musical. I mean, it makes sense given the original, given the original Gene Wilder movie, uh, you know, it makes sense that it would be a musical, but, uh, that and Mean Girls, I guess people were walking out of the theater. My daughter was telling me people were walking out of the theater because they didn't know it was a musical. They just thought it was a remake or a sequel. So they've been hiding it. So are they going to hide the fact that this is a musical in the trailer? Or are they going to lean into it and be like, yeah, you know, we got Lady Gaga. We have to, we have to use her. You know, I, I don't know. Are, are, do people want to see singing, dancing Joker and Harley Quinn? I don't know. <laughs> so what's left? They're saying what's left. Uh, Twisters, which is a sequel to Twister. Why? Uh, another another alien movie, I guess. They have another alien movie. Um, the Furiosa prequel, which looks awful. Gladiator 2, completely unnecessary. Beetlejuice 2 is the only... Uh, I hope, I hope, I hope Beetlejuice 2 is good uh, for my daughter's sake (laughs) because she loves Beetlejuice, but I don't know. There's a run of prequels, A Quiet Place, oh my God, Mufasa, nobody wants that. Sequels, Despicable Me 4, it'll do fine. Despicable Me will do well. Inside Out 2, I don't know about that one. Bad Boys 4, maybe. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, maybe. Uh, Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. It's going to be hard to to top Godzilla minus one, but okay, maybe. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Yeah, I want to see this one really bad. That being said, I don't know how it's going to do at the box office. I want to see Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire really bad, especially since I heard that they're going to borrow from the real Ghostbusters, which I was a huge fan of as a kid, but I don't know if if it's going to make money. Uh, Afterlife didn't do Gangbusters, even though it was a really good movie. And then they got Sonic 3. I can't help but feel that Hollywood is kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel this year. No shit. Uh, Yeah, they're talking about how everything's pretty much in limbo at this point. So yeah, when I look ahead to 2024, I fully expect some of the biggest hits to be movies we aren't even thinking about right now. Some of those uh, franchise films will do business, but the movies we're talking about at the end of the year may well be movies that no one even knows are on the schedule. That is true, and that's actually a good thing. How is that a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's it's a good wake-up call for Hollywood that you can't just keep going back to the same well again and again and again. And you certainly can't go back to franchises that you've destroyed. You know, the reason Aquaman didn't do very well is they destroyed the DCEU. The reason the Marvels didn't do very well is they destroyed the MCU. You notice the pattern here? Yeah, I, I notice the pattern. So we'll see. And uh, Madam Web, nobody cares about. But yeah, this guy uh, here... Scott Stuber, he's he's jumping ship. He's jumping out of the uh, the Netflix, the burning Netflix airplane or something. Something is is going on. This is Scott Stuber, who spearheaded much of Netflix's recent push into original movies. He's stepping down already as the film chairman to start a new media company. This sounds like I'm I'm going to go freelance. I'm going to go I'm going to go be a consultant. Uh, he's been in the role of chairman since the beginning of last year, seven years ago, Reed and Ted offered me the amazing opportunity to join Netflix and create a new home for original movies. Proud of what we accomplished. And I'm so grateful to all the filmmakers and talent who trust us. Yeah. So he's been there for a while and they did do a lot of original movies. I don't know if they made their money back though. These are some of the movies that he was in charge of red notice bird box and Ryan Johnson's star-studded murder mystery sequel, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. That was his idea. So it's it's kind of telling, I think, that the guy who's in charge of Netflix original movies is jumping 
from Netflix because I think this means that they're not going to be spending the money on the original movies that they were spending. Why should they? It's like if people are subscribing to Netflix to watch K-drama and a lot of them are anime or something like that, it's cheaper. Or comedy specials, it's cheaper. Yeah, why spend $200, $300 million on a freaking movie for Netflix if it's not going to have any real net benefit? I mean, they had a Ryan Reynolds movie. We watched that one. It was actually pretty okay. Um, Was it Project Adam? I don't know, Code Adam. I forget what it was called. It's a kid that's in Percy Jackson right now. I watched it. It was okay. But I'm sure they spent a ton of money on that, and I don't know if they got anything in return for it. So he's jumping ship. we got Paramount now laying off hundreds of people. Uh, Paramount Global is reportedly set to eliminate hundreds of jobs next month as sale rumors continue to swirl around the U.S. media company. Yeah, they're they're getting ready to sell it now. I don't know if they're selling it to Warner Brothers or selling it to uh, Skydance. I heard Skydance. They said that they're um, going to start shedding as much as or more than a thousand roles. I'm sorry. In the early part of the year, uh, they're saying at least 800. This isn't the first time Paramount has made deep cuts over the past 18 months as it has dealt with a lagging share price, accelerating cord cutting in a challenging ad market. Everybody's dealing with that right now. The company has implemented several rounds of layoffs and restructured several departments since the fall of 2022. Uh, and they integrated Showtime into Paramount+. Plus. Uh, I, I think everybody's going to wind up back at Netflix at some point. They had to sell or they renewed uh, efforts to sell the bet networks. Wow. Reports of this latest wave of layoffs come as Paramount continues to be the subject of M&A interest from a raft of financial and strategic buyers. Apollo Global Management is the latest outfit to express interest. Who? With Bloomberg reporting on Friday, the U.S. private equity firm is considering making an offer for Paramount Company National Amusements. Yeah, Skydance is reportedly in early talks, and then they talked about maybe merging with Warner Brothers, but um, they're not even going to bother looking for ads, I guess. Uh, Paramount confirms it's not going to return to upfront week. That's where they they basically go out and they say, hey, advertise on our platform. They're not even going to they're not even going to bother. They were going to do a, a high-impact, intimate, upfront gathering. That's interesting. It tells me things are not good, is what... I, at least that's my my takeaway from this, is things are not good. They, they're in a state of flux right now. Having this guy jump ship from Netflix, not a good sign. And yeah, Hollywood's kind of screwed, aren't they? They're kind of screwed. Uh, maybe if they hadn't destroyed their temple franchises, it could have got them through. You know, this drought. But, uh, you know, they already have. So hopefully Ghostbusters is good. Go, if Ghostbusters and Beetlejuice 2 are good, I'll be very happy. Uh, I'll be ecstatic if somehow Deadpool 3 is good. But I, I again, this is Disney. I don't I don't trust them to be good. And Joker 2, I, I really don't care. I like the first one okay, but I, I don't care. So tell me about it. What, what are you guys going to watch this year? Is there anything that looks good this year? Are you going to go see Madam Web? <laughs> Are any of you going to go see Madam Web? I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.